The techniques in the next few videos will focus on building classroom culture, making your room a place where students want to work hard, they want to behave, want to model strong character, and want to do their best. This one's a real gut buster. Singing in the shower is all fun and games until you get shampoo in your mouth. Then it's a soap opera. <laughs> Great organizations have a culture that's defined by its leaders. The same goes for our classrooms. Building a classroom culture that sustains and drives excellence requires mastering skills in five aspects of your relationship with students. The five principles of classroom culture are discipline, management, control, influence, and engagement. Now, these five aspects or principles are often confused and conflated. Many educators fail to consider the difference between them, or others use the names indiscriminately or interchangeably. However, since you must be sure to make the most of all five in your classroom, it's worth taking a moment to distinguish them. Principle number one is discipline. Now, when most people use the word discipline, they refer to the process of administering consequences and punishments. It's a verb. I discipline you. This type of discipline is concerned with how students behave, and therefore it deals with and relies on penalties and rewards. It stops behavior temporarily. This type of discipline is simply a band-aid. It stops deviant behavior temporarily. Procedures, on the other hand, teach students responsible skills. They can use them in school and in life. I prefer to think of discipline as a noun. I want to think of it as something that refers to the process of teaching someone. The process of teaching someone the right way to do something, or to the state of being able to do something the right way. Think, I have discipline, or I teach discipline. I like to think of discipline as self-discipline, right? The ability to make yourself do things all the way through. And it could also be in the form of the word that refers to like a body of ideas or a method of thinking, like an academic discipline. Try to remember that at its core, this definition of discipline is about teaching. Teaching students the right and successful way to do things. It's quite ironic that many teachers forget this element, even though it's most closely aligned to how we define our jobs. Right? A lot of teachers expect to teach the content, but not necessarily the habits and processes of being a successful student and community member. When I was a new teacher, I had set up a system of reward and consequence to try to hold my students accountable. I was trying to extort students to do their best. Right? I assumed all the while that they know how to do what's best. And I was wrong. Try to think of life outside of school. Right? You manage a store. You do not discipline a store. You manage a team. You do not discipline a team. And likewise, effective teachers manage a classroom. They don't discipline it. It really is not what we as teachers do to stop misbehavior that makes us effective. It's what we proactively do, the classroom management plan that we have in place to systematically teach procedures, to prevent problems in the first place. That's what really matters. You really cannot assume that students have learned proper classroom behavior in previous classrooms. Uh, you can just assume that they know the right way to do things, like sitting in class, taking notes, and following directions. If students are not doing what you asked, the most likely explanation is that you haven't taught them. Teaching discipline and teaching with discipline require a front-end investment in teaching your students how to be good students. And that requires a lot of planning. These procedures are your classroom mechanics. Uh, how will your students sit? How will your students line up? How will they enter the classroom and take notes? A procedure explains how you want something done. 
So it is the responsibility of the teacher to have procedures clearly stated. And you want to do them so often that they become routine, something that students do automatically, even without prompting or supervision. The most effective teachers that I've come across manage their classroom not with discipline in the verb sense. They manage it in the noun sense. They manage their classroom with procedures. Every time the teacher wants something done, there must be a procedure or a set of procedures already in place that have been taught, rehearsed, and reinforced. Most behavior problems in the classroom are caused by the teacher's failure to teach students how to follow procedures. Uh, it turns out that there are a lot of kids on the margins of the classroom culture who want to do what's expected of them. They're just waiting to be taught how. It's no secret, a super successful and effective teacher manages a classroom with procedures and routines. Procedures are used to have an organized and consistent classroom so that learning can take place. So that one day, your discipline turns into self-discipline.